Land Rover, eh? The only car I know that proudly shows off its rivets and its spot welds for the world to see. Because these things are held together in this fashion, there's a whole lot of stuff that you've got to learn about riveting. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how riveting it can be to put a Land Rover together. Rivet guns come in all types. You've got your small handyman's plier rivet. There's the mechanised semi-industrial rivet gun. It does exactly the same thing, but it means you can put your cordless drill on the back of it. And, that turn, and this turns rotary action into a pulling action. These are great if you've got a few hundred rivets to do. When you've got some big riveting to do, a lazy tong riveter is the kind of riveter you use for really getting some grunt in. But if you've got thousands of rivets to do, this is an air rivet gun. The air rivet gun fits onto an airline and once again produces exactly the same pulling action that tightens the rivet into the panel work. But on a Land Rover there is one slightly more specialised kind of rivet and that's a riv nut. You'll find those on the firewall where they want a clean look on the inside but something has to be bolted onto the outside. For example, where the coil fits and also how the steering column bolts onto the bulkhead. You can see here that the coil is held on by two riv nuts and this bracket here also requires riv nuts to hold it to the firewall. But one common problem with these things is that these riv nuts will fail because if, as bolts come loose and the vehicle does a lot of four wheel driving, there's wrenching on the steering wheel and that's transferred down the steering column which pulls on these and pulls them from the bulkhead. So somehow they've got to be repaired. So after many years I went out and I bought myself a riv nut plier. Riv nut pliers work the same way as any other rivet gun, a pulling action. But instead of squeezing up a rivet, they squeeze up an insert that's threaded on the inside in various sizes to take bolts. The interchangeable heads come in different sizes and they're fitted to this part here which pulls in as it's tightened. And then you open it again, screw the excess slack up a little bit more, and then give it another pull. Typically takes about three good hefty pulls. These pliers come in different sizes. The larger the diameter bolt, the longer the handles will be, and the stronger the head. On a Land Rover, they only have them in one size, which is 3 eighths of an inch. I've chosen to go with 10 millimeter, which is the same size and the same size head, just has a slightly different thread form. So now I'm going to take that uh, bracket off the firewall, move it to one side slightly, and we can have a look at how a rib nut is fitted. Basically, they've got a, a weak section in the wall that wrinkles and compresses when you pull. So the threaded part stays intact, but then this waste piece collapses and pulls up tight in the middle of the hole, taking up any gap, and pulls it against the swage on the outside. They're a clever little thing. So the first thing I do is put the rev nut insert onto the mandrel, open the legs out as wide as they'll go and screw the insert down as far as it will go. Then I put it in and start squeezing up. One big squeeze, tighten up the free play, then another big squeeze, getting hard now. These are steel inserts, they're the strongest. You can get aluminium and brass as well. Okay, three squeezes, last one. 
that's it, I think. I won't get much more than that. Right. And now you just back the mandrel out of the insert. And you end up with a very durable threaded insert that you can screw anything sort of medium duty up into it. So I can swing this bracket up into place. And the only deviation from standard is that one's going to be 3 8 UNC and the other one will be 10 millimeter ISO. The bolts will appear very similar. The same spanner will fit both. There's just a slight difference in the thread. But it's not the kind of thing that people are going to be undoing again in any great hurry, I shouldn't imagine. Now there's one last thing that I wanted to show you while I've got the bonnet open. You'll notice that while I've been doing this the master cylinder has been off the brake booster. I'll just grab it and show you one of the reasons why. I'm re-kitting it at the moment so I'm just waiting for the kit to arrive. So I've painted it up. And on the other side, take a look at what I've done. I've covered it in self-adhesive foil tape. Because here in New Zealand we have a huge problem with these things getting a big strip of sun streaming in between the bonnet and the top of the guard and it literally cooks the plastic. So this is how we stop it happening. That just reflects the sun away and makes these things last forever. Because if you don't, you can't just buy the reservoir. You have to buy the entire master cylinder. <laughs>